Welcome back to No Chill with Gilbert Arenas. We're back with a special heat check. Now, after months of speculation, the Dame Lillard saga has finally reached its conclusion as the Blazers traded the seven-time All-NBA selection to the Bucks in a three-team trade along with the Suns that sent shockwaves through the basketball world. So for those who aren't aware, here are the details of the deal. The Bucks get Dame. The Blazers get Drew Holiday, DeAndre Ayton, Suns 2023 second round pick to Monty Kamara, an unprotected 2029 first round pick from the Bucks, plus two pick swaps. And the Suns get Yusuf Nurkic, Grayson Allen, Nasir Little, and Keon Johnson. So we're going to take a deeper look at this trade from all three squads, but we got to start with the most important one, the Bucks. So Gil, what are your thoughts on Damian Lillard teaming up with Giannis and Chris Middleton to form a new big three on the Bucks? Yeah. We got him. Yeah. So, you know, um, we can officially say Blazers did right by Dame, putting him in a situation where he can be successful. Um, you know, that was the big worry. You know, will they do right? Will they send him somewhere where he can't win and he's in the same situation he is? But, you know, um, they did right by him by putting him with the best team in the East last year. I mean, they were number one in the East last year. And, you know, now he gets to, you know, be added to one one of the most dominant big men in the game and probably the most dominant person in the East right now. So, look, we had talked about this at length ever since Dame announced his trade request back in July. He had seemed hell-bent on going to the Heat. Obviously, there were other teams that presented, you know, if he wanted to actually win that championship and, and, and get to that level, there were teams that presented better opportunities. You talk about the Celtics. You talk about the Bucks, obviously, like we did. So it seems like, and this is no knock to the Heat, because they got a great team, made the finals, beat the Bucks in the first round. Obviously, Giannis was injured for, for most of those games. So it wasn't exactly the Bucks team that we're accustomed to seeing. But does this seem like, you know, from Dame's standpoint, the best opportunity now, obviously, you had the opportunity to go to South Beach, turn up, probably a much better destination just from a living standpoint than Milwaukee, but from a basketball championship standpoint, Bucks seem like one of the best options, if not the best option for Dame. No, no, I mean, the, the, the Miami Heat option was never an option, you know, once free agency started because, you know, some of the pieces that they would have needed to trade for Dame, they didn't sign back. So um, once they didn't sign back uh, Gabe, Vincent, and players like that. There was, you had no assets, right? You would have had to give up, you know, Jimmy Butler or Bam. So it didn't make any sense. And even with those three, I don't think they would have been good enough, you know, to, to, to you know, go through the East like that. I mean, but, you know, you know, Dame is a different player, you know, added with Jimmy. So that, um, that duo would have really been different. Um, but I think... What what Dame has been missing, and he's he texts me in it too. We we've had this conversation um, in the past, um, and he texted me about an hour ago, and I you know I asked him you know are you happy, and he wrote I am you know I think it will finally come to light that I'm one of those guys at the very top. They have discredited me for years without acknowledgement. How I was never on even close to even playing field with everybody else. And I think because he's been in a smaller market, no one really, you know, embraced, you know, what he was doing over there. And we used to talk about like, you know, how do I get my name out there? And I was like, I was doing the same thing in, you know, Washington and I had to start talking, you know, telling people what I'm gonna do. I'm about to score 50 on, I'm about to do this. And, you know, some of those markets, you have to be your own uh, spokesperson. You know, Dame is quiet. So I think now that he's going to be on that big stage um, and going to be number one in the East and he's going to do what he's going to do, all of a sudden he's going to go from Dame to this superstardom all because of a team he's playing on. And I think at this point in his career, that's what he's been, you know, looking for. You know, so for lack of a better word, Dame has gotten some heat for his previous comments about not running from the grind. But spent 11 seasons with the Blazers, you know, was extremely loyal to that franchise, to that city. Sometimes you got to run from the grind. I think to your point, when you talk about legacy and how legacies are formed, I think as an individual player, top 75 all time, coming off one of his best seasons, highest point per game average, highest three point makes per game average, you know. But the Blazers, I think, let it be known uh, by drafting Scoot with that third overall pick. 
that they were still more focused on rebuild mode. And now you talk about Milwaukee, not necessarily the sexiest market, you know, but with that squad and what they're going to be able to do, you know, and at that level, now it gives him an opportunity to show what he's really capable of doing. So I want to know from, from your standpoint, how much pressure now is on Dame? Because now you don't got that excuse that you're playing for the Blazers. You're kind of playing for this, you know, mediocre to bottom, bottom level team in the West. Now you're coming on the team that was number one in the West before Giannis got hurt last year, uh, you know, or number one in the East, excuse me, before Giannis got hurt last year. Uh, and now you have the opportunity to go do all the things that you set out to do. Listen, it, it's goofy talk when someone says someone's not running from a grind. I mean, <laughs> how long do you grind before, you know, people really respect it? Obviously, they didn't respect this grind because you don't have him as one of the top point guards in, you know, in the game. So you didn't respect this grind. You didn't respect the hard work he was putting in. You didn't respect his loyalty because you didn't give him the accolades that went with this grind. All you respect is winning which means you have to be with other players to win. You can't be by yourself being this dominant force because no one respects it. They respect that, that, that thought that, okay, I can be 80% and team up with a whole bunch of other players who's gonna play 80%, but, but because we're so dynamic together, we never have to put our, our push our engines and we're number one. They respect that more than versus a guy who has to go a thousand percent just to keep up. So there's no pressure on Dane. The reason there's no pressure is when he played for the Blazers for the last six, seven years, he had to play 130% to keep up. You remember when, um, when he missed a free throw against the Clippers and the whole starting lineup is laughing. And then he came back, gave him up like 60, 55. But he had to do that to compete. Well, when you were Giannis and that, that, that number one squad over there, he don't have to go 110%. And he's going to get acknowledged more by revving his engine less. That's the funny part about how we, how we view this sport, right? 130%, nah, he's doing it by himself. Yeah, that ain't good enough. Go there, they're going to start the season, damn near, probably 8-13-0, and 0, and they're going to be oh, my God, Dame is doing such a great job. He's one of the elite point guards, and he's playing half his engine. Yeah. Hilarious. And I think you, you've talked about this a lot. For a guy that was in Dame's position, being that star player on the squad that maybe is not that good, he's getting all the attention from the defense. So what he's got to do from an output standpoint every night, you know, a lot of people just look, oh, well, his team is not that good. So it's easy for him to get buckets when in reality is probably a lot harder than playing with a, a squad like he's got now in the Bucks. No, it, it's listen, it's harder to guard someone when there's other players on the team that can do it too. So you can't double, you can't focus on the defense like that. Well, in, in Portland, everything was focused on him, right? Everything was focused on um his pick and rolls and coming to the lane, his pull up, everything was focused on it. Now you, you can't. As soon as you look at him, Giannis is coming down the lane. You think about trying to stop Giannis, you got Dame and Middleton there. So the game becomes easier for him. It's like, there's no, that's what I said, there's no pressure. Pressure to be number one, they were number, no, there's no pressure. But this ain't about regular season. This ain't about regular season. This is, this, the Dame that they, 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 they traded for is the dude that the last time we see him in the playoffs averaged 34. 34, 46% from the field, 45 from the three. <laughs> that, that's, that's who they're getting in the playoffs. See, when Giannis has to play basically one on five, you know, Drew Holiday playoff numbers has been horrible. They've been, they've been, I'm not gonna lie, they've been horrible. Right, I think he shot what, 39%, shit, wait, hold on. I got 37% from the field, 31 from the three. That was two years ago. Last year, 40% from the field, 28 from the three. 69 from the free throw line as a guard, right? But I don't look at the numbers like that because his, his greatness is defense, right? He's a, an elite defender and he takes on the Jimmy Butlers and the Tatums and the Jalen Browns when they get hot, the James Hardest. That's, you know, being 6'3", six, 6'4", six, and you're taking on these bigger guys, that does drain a lot of energy from you. But, you know, when you're when you're talking about, 
you know, what Dane brings. Dane brings, he's a number two ISO player in the NBA last year. That's what he brings. And, you know, they used to say defense wins championships, but I've never seen a game one where the score was 0-0. So no, that's like, that, they're going to they need that offense. They're going to need yeah. that 30-piece, you know, that made defend sense. this. Defend that made this pick and roll. That made sense in the 70s and the 60s. <laughs> <laughs> So let's talk a little bit about Giannis. Giannis was very vocal this offseason in terms of his future with the Bucks. He said he was going to wait to sign his extension until the Bucks showed they were just as committed as to winning another championship as he is. So I think the Bucks have shown Giannis, you know, they're about that business, about that action, landing Dame. So I want to ask you a two-part question. How does Dame impact Giannis' game, and how does Giannis impact Dame's game? It's, it's the yin and the yang. It's the Kobe and, the, you know, the LeBron. Um, I mean, uh, the Kobe and Shaq, the, the Shaq and Penny. It's it's that uh, Tony Parker and Duncan type, right? They're the Steve Nash and, and Amari, Chris Paul and, you know, Blake Griffin. Because Dame is such a great shooter and Giannis is a great finisher, slasher, when they do picking rolls, there's really nothing you're going to do. You're not going to switch. You're not going to be that dumb. Can't hard show. Because, <laughs> you know, if Giannis slip, you, it's one of those unstoppable forces once they get their, their timing together and they help each other because they're the opposite of what each other does and they need exactly what each other has to be dominant. You know, uh, you know, Giannis needs a guard that can turn the corner, that can shoot the deep ball, that can you try to play under. If you help, right? You know, I get the free up. You know, Giannis needs a guy that if you try to sit in the lane on me, I got a guy who can, you know, hit you from 45 feet, right? <laughs> you know what I mean? So you can't you can't sit in the lane anymore, right? With Drew Holiday, it was the, uh, you can't do that no more. Not even close. You know, so Giannis is going to be in there playing like he playing back in Greece on the playground <laughs> by himself. You know, so, it, 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 you know, these two, this is a, this is a perfect combo. So now let's let's just hypothetically you're you're an opposing coach and you got to try and scheme and game plan defensively against that duo. How do you do it? One you try to zone them. You try to zone it. Um I remember playing against you know Amari and um Steve Nash and if you look at his numbers Steve Nash killed me. Right? Cuz you know we got to go you got to go over cuz so they can't shoot behind. Um the big man is not going to help so that's going to be a turn corner pull up. Um, hard showing. I mean, you can hard show pre-rotate. You know, hard show just pre-rotate, and that's Middleton sitting in that corner, dead by himself, right? So, um, you know, they're, <laughs> they're, they, it's it's a per that's what I'm saying. It's 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 a perfect matchup. It's like having Steve Nash with Carl Malone, right? John Stockton was amazing. But John Stockton couldn't shoot like Steve Nash can shoot, and Steve Nash can pass just as great as um, John Stockton did. So just imagine having that type of force doing a pick and roll where if you thought about going under, pay out. And he can score 40 and 50 if he wanted to. So it's like it's just like these key players that get put together. But game playing for it is good luck. <laughs> you got to pray. Pray to your God and, and hope it works out. So when you look at the Bucks now and just into the future and the window that this big three squad has, Dame is under contract until at least 2026. Giannis and Middleton both can opt out after the 2025 season. This means the Bucks have about a two-season window, at least with this new big three. So when you look at Giannis and, you know, there had been talk about him trying to go to a bigger market, potentially the Knicks or other spots like that. Is adding Dame enough to get Giannis to commit to the Bucks for the long term? Yes. And I think that statement was to pressure them to make this trade. So I'm pretty sure they came to him talking about a trade um, and options. And I, I think he probably, you know, um, voiced his concern on who he wanted. Is, isn't Dame who he picked first? Yep, and also, in the, uh, you know, so he knows he knows what the two bring. And I think this was the trade he wanted, because with them two, you're never out of contentions. You're never out of content. There's just, you know, they can get rid of Middleton and, and go sign a Jimmy Butler still or go sign, you know, one of these young, 
you know, three men and still be right back at the top. So um, I think it's going to be one of those Golden State um, type of dynasties, you know, towards the end of their career. But I think they're going to be favorite the last these next three to four years. So, I mean, just just looking at the Bucks and the opportunity that it presented, Giannis making those comments about the franchise. Do you think there was a world that maybe where Giannis and Dame were communicating behind the scenes and, and applying that pressure? Because, again, Dame, Dame said repeatedly, and that was all of the reports, I, I just want to go to the Heat. That's the only place I'm going. And it's like, yeah, that's cool. Who doesn't want to be in South Beach? But when you have the opportunity to play with the generational talent like Giannis, you know, multiple MVPs, finals MVPs, championship, has that championship experience and pedigree, you don't really pass up on it. Like you mentioned, the All-Star game, Giannis took Dame with his first pick. So it seems like these dudes may have been plotting this thing for, for a little bit longer than people might might be aware of. No, I, 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 I don't think Bucks knew that they were in contentions until, you know, um, until probably Giannis reached out. Listen, the biggest the biggest trades in history are the trades that never happened because the players talk to the players. Now, once I get a commitment from the person I'm trying to recruit, it's the it's the uh the team's job, the management job is to make the deal happen. Right? So there's there's trades that could have been happened. You know, you hear about the Kevin Garnett to the We Believe team, right? Right, you hear about these possibilities of things that happen because players talk to players, right? We respect each other's game, so it's like, yo, I want you to come here, what's up? All right, bet. Now it's convincing the dummies up top, right? And I think that's why Giannis decided to pull that, hey, I'm not gonna sign here if y'all don't, you know, make this happen because we know what fits us. They, management don't play the actual game. They hear names. They look at stats, they look at, but when you're talking about knowing someone's game, knowing what fits, the pieces that fit to the puzzle, only the players that's playing on the court knows that, right? So we can see from the outside and say, yeah, that's not gonna work right there. They don't know that, right? They, they can't see that coming. They just see names and they look at, oh, he only shot 30%. He shot 30% in that system because that's how they're playing him. In this system, he's gonna be about 42. So. Um, this was a, this was a Giannis and Dame calling, Hey, you want to team up? You want to, you, I know you want to go to South beach, but I think we can present a better chance of winning the chip. For sure. I know you, you like, Hey, listen, I know you like the, uh, <laughs> uh you know, wet willies. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> we got cheese over here. <laughs> cheese and beer. <laughs> we got cheese and beer over here. It's not the same, but a ring and cheese and beer do, do, do look good. And then we can go to South Beach after. Yeah, no, we, that's, it's about a three hour, <laughs> four hour flight away. Ain't no big deal. But do you feel like from Dame's side, maybe there was a little uh, Jedi mind trickery going on too with the Blazers? Like, look, I just want to go to the Heat. Send me anywhere but the Bucks. I just want to go to Miami. I'm not trying to go, you know, like, uh, play with nah, Giannis. Nah, nah, I'm good. No, nah, I mean, you know, I think, you know, um, him and the Bucks, they, I mean, him and uh, the Blazers had, you know, uh, a mutual respect of, you know, I've done everything that I can here. You guys are looking in a different direction. Um, and that direction is, you know, without me, you know, in a sense. And, you know, I understand it. You know, can you put me in a situation where, you know, I can win? And, you know, there was only a few teams in the East um, that had pieces that can make that move. And, um, you know, it was them. You know, even if he went to, you know, um, let's say Sixers for James Harden, that doesn't, didn't do nothing. Not moving you, right? It's not, yeah, it's, it's not, not, it's not, it's not, it's not. The, the needle's not really, eh. You know, Joel pick and pop guy, you know, you know, more of an ISO guy, you know, get his rhythm type of guy, you know, that don't work. That That's... So Bucks, obviously still favorites, uh, and are now the favorites to come out of the East with this move. Uh, you know, as Lakers fans, this this move the uh, the Celtics over, which uh, you know, always a good thing. But do you think that Celtic squad, as constructed now, can be competitive against this Bucks squad or, or give them a run for the Eastern Conference? Yeah, I mean, you know, you know, uh, Celtics made some nice moves too. You know, they they got a big. 
um, and a unicorn, and that's going to help him. I mean, he averaged, what, 19, 19 and 10, 19. I mean, he averaged high double-double last year, you know, for Washington. So um, it's going to give them some length in the back where he can challenge and block shots. You have, you know, two wings that are, are priming right now. They're playing great basketball, and they're not even in their prime. They're still young. They're still young boys, right? Um, and what, what ends up happening is because you don't have Drew Holiday – to guard the off one, right? Uh, Bucks, Bucks, shooting guard and three is is going to be neutralized in that series, right? It's going to be one of those um, matchups where, you know, Tatum or Brown is going to be giving Middleton all of that work, and you're going to lose Middleton in that series um, because you know he's going to be focused so much on defense where you're going to lose his offense where. Drew Holiday was that guy who, you know, picked up that slack. So, and Grayson Allen. I mean, you, you lose two defenders. You know, you lose two guys who was willing to, you know, uh, put their uh, bodies on the line, put their offense on the line, you know, to stop the opposing, you know, wing. So, um, that'd be a, that's going to be a good matchup because it's an off balance there where the, the stars on both sides are really going to be, you know, shining. So let's talk a little bit just about Adrian Griffin uh, entering his first season with his Bucks, the first head coaching job, a uh, longtime assistant, tons of experience. You didn't say there's, there's no pressure on Dame necessarily or, or, or Giannis, but how much pressure is on him to get this team moving in the right direction? Because let's just say hypothetically they start out a little shaky. You, you said they'd go 8-0, 13-0, this team would be on a roll. Now they don't produce at that level. You know, Is he on the hot seat at all? Hey. Adrian, hey, <laughs> this is gonna be, hey, this is gonna be him next year, right? During the season. Why been sub? Oh, uh, who? Uh, so, all right, sub. He <laughs> listen. This, this is <laughs> right, right. This is one of those situations where if he looks like he's out there really, really coaching, he's just playing for the cameras. Got he's to. just playing for the cameras because you have. A number one team. You have a championship team, right? This is not a situation where you're rebuilding. Those players that won it, most of the players that won that championship, they're still on this team, right? And now you added someone who's hungry in winning, someone who is a shot maker, who's efficient, who's who's an elite scorer added with an elite driver, slasher, dunker, whatever you want to call Giannis, just a freak of nature. Your, your job is easy. Like this is not a, this is not, you know, the, you're in a situation like Steve Nash was where, you know, you got three elements coming in, you know, you don't know. You, you just got one element coming in that is a basketball player. He's not a hooper. He's a basketball player, meaning he knows reads. He understands the game. His IQ is very high. So as a coach, all you're doing is just sitting there making the right subs. That's it. There's no, I'm not even going to pretend that this job is like, no, we're not even going to do it. Just like Luke Walton did when <laughs> with the Golden State Warriors, <laughs> just sit there. They run 24 games in a row. That's it. I will listen. If I'm gonna be a coach, this is the this is the job I want to be in. For sure. This this job out of all the teams in the NBA right now, I don't want to be with the defending champs, right? Because yeah. this that's pressure, right? The Lakers, like you know, no, 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 no. This one right here, <laughs> yeah. Sit back. I, I I can just count the money. Ooh, I'm, baby, let's go get that house. Like this, that's the type of team that you know that he he has right now. You have bas you have basketball players, you have workers. You don't have to worry about them getting in trouble, Giannis getting in trouble. But you don't have to worry about none of that. You got somebody who's showing up to work doing his job. I think that's the best part about that Buck squad. You really don't have any problems on that roster, right? All mm -hmm. these guys are locked in, all savvy vets. Not not getting into no shit. The worst you got to worry about is maybe Dame staying at the recording studio too long. In the he got that in the, got that in his house. He, but he got it at the crib. His album already done, so he, he good. His album already done. <laughs> hey, Bucks fans, better make sure that shit goes. Jo hey, hey, Bucks. hey, buy that, buy the album, buy the album, watch the game when it's drop. 
I need I need five million downloads. <laughs> I ain't giving y'all nothing. But after the deal was announced, uh, Bucks are now the top pick to win the twenty twenty four championship, according to the odds makers. The Nuggets have slipped to second. But you talk about you know how the outside world views these rosters versus how players like yourself, current and former, would view these rosters. Does this Buck squad have enough to compete with the Nuggets? Yeah, because um, the two positions that the Nuggets have and that um, Bucks have are the same position, right? The two two stars on both teams are head to head. Um, when it comes to Giannis and when it comes to Giannis versus, you know, Jokic, you're, you're, you're talking to, you're talking about a very close matchup, right? The only thing, like you're talking about one average is 25, the other average is about 32, right? Both average 11 rebounds and then the assists is what put Jokic a little bit, but Greeks points. It kind of, there's, it's just, it's, it's barely, right? Yeah. Well, Dame versus um, Murray, eh. Wow. That's a big difference. Yeah. I mean, that's a, that's a, you know, you're talking about 19, 20 versus 30, right? That's a big difference. So um, you have the same type of one, two combo. So from there, it's who has the best role players. Um, yeah. You throw a healthy Middleton into that mix. You know, that, that's, another offset. Layer. That's, the, that's the offset because, you know, um, last year, your third option, which was uh, Michael Porter, didn't have a great, you know, um, finals. Um, Gordon picked it up. Um, so it can be. It's going to be it's going to be good but I, I will give it to the Bucks. I, I think they have a little bit more in that starting unit than Denver. So let's let's talk a little bit about the Miami Heat in this whole situation. Dame let it be known uh, early on that his preferred destination was the Heat. Heat had the potential to put together the best trade package, uh but that reportedly never materialized for the 33-year-old Lillard. You know, didn't want to give up a little too much what they felt like in their their guesstimations, but will the Heat regret not pulling the trigger on the Dame trade? What were they giving up? Uh, you know, multiple young guys. They would have probably had to find a third team for for Hero, but you know, it's like Hero, Jovic, uh, Jaime Hawkins potentially a bunch of first, bunch of pick swap seconds, but you know, didn't all didn't come to the table with all that according to reports. So, who cares? <laughs> right? Hey, hey, listen. You know we I'm don't going, care. Listen, you know Pat is the godfather over there, right? And if he didn't, if he didn't do the trade, it was for a reason. So um, there's no point in questioning and saying they're going to regret um, the decision making. There was a decision that, that there was a reason that he didn't do the trade. He didn't think it was probably going to benefit him in the long run. And that's the the decision he went with. And last question for you on, on this. Because I was, re- I was ready to get my Miami Heat zero jersey. I'm like, not even gonna lie. You know, now now I got now I gotta get a zero bucks. Gil, you know. So I help you out. I'm on the bandwagon now. It's beautiful to see, Gil. It's about I'm on the time. bandwagon now. You, you, you had some slander for the city of Milwaukee for the Bucks. It's a beautiful place. You're gonna love it out there. It's a little cold. You gotta bring your winter coat. But they got a, you know, that city is thriving right now and it's going to be super turned up. So glad to see it. You know, we got Brandy Jennings already on the crew. We got my pops out there working. We got Gil now. I'm here people, now, Bucks. I'm here now, Bucks. They, and they're going to treat you better than the city of Detroit. I know that. They're going to roll, you know. <laughs> they don't take kindly to slander Milwaukee, but not as bad as the city of Detroit does. So they, hey, they're going to have hey, some love for you. Hey, it don't matter if they start booing. I'm going to be on the front row. You can boo all you want, but I'm a Bucks fans now. <laughs> yes, Bucks sir. Bucks in six. Bucks in four. Hey, okay. You said it. We'll see. <laughs> but uh, so last question for you on this whole Bucks side, and I think I know the answer, but I still got to ask it. Do you like Dame on the Bucks more than you would have liked Dame on the Heat with Jimmy Butler and Bam? Yeah. Um, Because it's not Jimmy Butler and – it's Jimmy Butler and Bam, but it's Middleton and and, and Giannis. Yeah, it seems like a better, a better fit. That's a better. That's a better fit. So yeah, I'll I'll, I'll stick with the yeah. one that that happened. 
Yeah, I mean, I think you think Dame and Jimmy Butler are both dogs, but that would have created some tension, I feel like, down the road, especially in the playoffs, because they both want to be the guy in that moment. Middleton, now, I think. Now, you know what? Now, Jimmy's smart enough to understand who will be that go-to guy in, in the, 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 the moments of the game. And when he wouldn't perform, that's when Jimmy would have stepped up. But Jimmy would have went back to being like a Scottie Pippen type. That's the okay. brilliancy of Jimmy, that no one... No one take, gives him credit for. He plays his He reminds me of Karan Butler, right? I'm the number one option. Antoine's the number two option. Karan is the number three. Karan was the number three option. If I'm not playing, Karan was the number one option. Antoine stayed in the middle, right? And that's how Jimmy is. Jimmy, Jimmy is smart enough to understand Dame, if Dame was here, he's the number one option, I'll be the number three. No Dame, I'll be the number one option.